Hey there, friendlies. How's up? I got something cool today. Boom, baby. So, what's this? This is one of the bottles from the Scotch Malt Whiskey Society. You may hear a lot of noise. There's a party going on there. There's a party going on there. Traffic going by. And the pump is on on the pool, so. Apologies. Let's just get this baby open and then we can talk about it. I've sort of spoken about the uh, Scotch Malt Whiskey Society before. <laughs> you guys hear this? They're an independent bottler. They're a big independent bottler. And unlike some, you have to be a member. Nice sound. I do believe there's a child getting in trouble next door. So, the society. Uh, you have to be a member of the society in order to buy the bottles. The closest outlet to me is in Calgary, which is like, I don't know, 4,000 kilometers away. Having a fiddler who lives in Calgary is a benefit. This bottle is 53.317, and they're color-coded. This green means it's the peated, not the heavily peated, but it's their peated range. Uh, this is a 10-year, 53 is Kalila. 317 means this is the 317th a cask that the society has bought. It's a refill ex bourbon hogshead. Sorry guys, it's really hot out. I'm just <laughs> just checking the weather. Yeah, it's 26 degrees right now. The air quality is four, so moderate health risk. Whatever that means. So Kalila, Isla Malt. The thing is. In these independent bottlings, if you see an Isla Malt, chances are really big that it's a Kalila because they are all about doing this. Uh, but anyways, I'm looking forward to uh, sampling this malt. I'm looking forward to letting you know what I think. I I've said before that I don't really want to do too many of these because they only made like 276 bottles, right? It's one hogshead. You, if you don't have this, you're not going to be able to get it. Um, I strangely have two of them because I accidentally purchased one after purchasing one. But anyways, let's um, let's see what we think of this. Now, the first thing I'd like you to see is this color, okay? Because the thing about the society, hold on. Do you see that? Because the thing about the society is, it's no chill filtering, it's no caramel coloring all the time. It's always cast strength, always natural color no chill filter so i mean i think that's a beautiful color um, i'm swirling it just to see what kind of tears we get not much going on tears wise so i'm expecting a relatively good oily mouth feel let me give it a little sniffy poo now cast strength what is this strength on this 59 no 58 percent alcohol by volume so I'm not gonna go diving in. I'm just gonna start like this. That's, that's Isla. Maritime. A little bit of salt. Something slightly fishy. Something burning. Going right in now. Oh, <laughs> it's alive. Uh, I'm getting dock side. The fishy smell, oceanic fishy smell though, not like rotting fish in a lake. Kippers maybe, something foody. There's a wet wood, like a wooden dock. Makes you want to go sailing. Charred oak. There is some vanilla, some treacle kind of thing, like a candied apple. This is reminding me of being on the west coast, there's like tide pools, uh, you know, there are uh, mussels or, or, you know, shellfish growing in, in, the, in the pools. I'm getting, uh, there, there's plants, there's a herbal thing happening, like seaside grasses and stuff, but there's citrus there too, there's a, like a lemon peel. It's not heavy on the vanilla and the, the sweet though. It's just very, this, this is vibrant. Oh, it smells good. It really does. All right, I'm gonna go in. <laughs> Woo! Oh, 
that is. Oh, that's good. Oh, that is so good. That is briny, peaty, smoky. There's a the smoked fish thing is is there. It's wet, loamy. The sweet vanilla-y butterscotchy thing is is very bad, but it's there. It's like a like a dessert. Uh, it's malty though, so it, it, let me do this again. The maltiness is there. There's an evergreen pine tar. This is singing my song, man. This is. This is where scotch gets the most exciting for me. These kind of flavors, peatiness, smokiness, charred wood, piney. Still with just a hint of, of the sweetness, the, the caramelly goodness from, the vanilla and, and caramel are, are from the, the American oak, right? The ex-bourbon, which is important here because it sort of just takes the edge off. If this was in like a, a European oak, but not like a sherry or something, something that left the spice in, like a Hungarian oak or something. I've had a couple of drams from Hungarian. It would be way over the top. This needed to be in an ex-bourbon hogshead. Well, an ex-bourbon American oak barrel. <clears throat> oh, I gotta take a walk around the block after this. Salt water. The caramel in the salt water kind of reminds me of like, have you guys ever had that salt water taffy? But think of that with more salt water than taffy. <laughs> the the herbal aspect is definitely there. It's strong. It's the, the maritime, the, the salt. Um, what I mean by salt, you know, brine. I don't want to put water in this, but we will. It's for the science. And now. Now that I've tasted it, the brininess is, is, is out more. Um, the caramelliness is, is becoming, because of the malty aspect, the, the sweetness is creating more of like a, a graham cracker or like a, 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 a graham cracker crust. Okay, so where would I have this? This is a dram I would take um, camping or, or paddling on a, on a paddling trip. I'm on a five day paddling uh, like canoe camping trip great if I'm hiking uh, like Bruce Trail next to one of the Great Lakes or something perfect campfire amazing terrific anything outdoorsy I think um, that's where this dram needs to be uh, I will still drink it after supper or on a special occasion inside but this is definitely an outdoorsy dram for me the mouthfeel is good it's got a nice oiliness to it the finish is, is, it lingers. It's a nice, lingery finish. Very maritime. The lemon peel is still there. It's not, it's not very heavy, even in the taste. The lemon peel is not massive, definitely present. And it, it's just sitting there on top of the, the salt water magic, just going off into the distance. Still oily, definitely oily. Kind of a waxy thing happening. Uh, so let's kill it. Let's destroy it. A little swirly poo. Get in there right away before the volatiles volatate. <laughs> now the cool maritime air aspect that I got from the classic laddie and the, the late chick is definitely there. That, that cools it right off. Not to that extent, but it, it's recognizable. Still very warm. Very. It's not destroyed actually. There's more of a kipper's aspect here, there. Here, there? What? Sorry guys, but this is. This is. Ah, oh, man. What a bottle. What a bottle. So big.
but yeah, a lot of the same notes are there. A little less dimensionality. Saltier. Now sweeter. Now it's the saltwater taffy kind of. You know, I'm saying saltwater taffy, but saltwater taffy doesn't really have that big a salt element, does it? Maybe I'm thinking more of like a salted caramel, but definitely more oceanic. And it is definitely toned down. I add a little bit of water and it blooms just a bit. Uh, do I prefer it with the water? No, but I don't hate it either. Very spicy. Very, very spicy now. The finish with the water is more spice, 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 um, and lemon, lemon, lemon. The salt water aspect sort of takes a step back. One thing I forgot to do was the checklist. So, Jesse's checklist. What do we got here? We have a single malt. We have a single barrel. Um, we have an age statement, 10 years old. Uh, we have 58%, so we're way above the 45 that I like to start at, which is now changing more to like a 50, by the way. Um, we have no caramel coloring. We have no chill filtering. So this is all win. Eight and a half. Eight and a half. 8.5 on 10. So that's all she wrote. Thanks for hanging out with me as I reviewed this bottle right here. <clears throat> there we go. Came into focus. Um, that's the Scotch Malt Whiskey Society 53.317 Peated Magic. As I always say, thanks for watching. If you like what I'm doing here, then please do these three things. One, comment down below. Are you into the society or do you not really like that kind of thing? Are you big on independent bottlers in general or do you just like straight up core range? Um, do you want me to do more of these? Because I'm not going to do more of these if you guys don't want it because I feel kind of crappy. You can't buy it. What was the point of this review? Anyway, moving right along. Second thing I'd like you to do is please share this video. That helps me more than you could possibly imagine. And the third thing, leave me a smiley thumb. If you don't look at him doing that, so okay. Leave me a frowny thumb. Thanks for watching, guys. I'm going to finish this off.